In this lesson, we look at some of the practical issues around conducting appraisals. It is likely that most people in modern organisations will agree that appraisals, at least on paper, are a good thing. It allows management to tell people how they believe they are doing, and some appraisals also allow people on the shop floor to appraise management too. But why is it that there are often difficulties with appraisals? One of the reasons is that we both fear criticism of ourselves and we do not necessarily enjoy being critical of others, albeit constructive criticism. This is perhaps because in our society, failure is seen as a bad thing and not necessarily as an opportunity for learning and developing. Also, the way in which many appraisals are set up is that it is part of the performance management system with consequences, either good or bad. A good appraisal might bring a wage rise, a promotion, a move up the career ladder, whereas a bad or average appraisal may also have consequences. Perhaps you are not being promoted at your standing still. Perhaps you are demoted, your wages do not rise. These are fairly significant consequences and very many organisations use the appraisal as a way of calculating what should happen to you in the future. Even if they do not do that, at the appraisal you are often scored in some way, which falls back on all of the things we hate most. Some people also believe that if you use an appraisal system to praise your staff, it can lead them to be overconfident and perhaps lead to declining productivity. Bad past appraisals, both in the part of the person being appraised and the person doing the appraisal, will also have negative consequences. If we have had an appraisal in the past that was bad for us, perhaps had negative consequences, it is only natural that we will not look forward or particularly trust the appraisal we are about to have. For all of those reasons, and no doubt many more, appraisals can be difficult to actually conduct. Practical appraisals are similar to any other people feedback process. So let's consider what any good feedback process may look like. Firstly, before we can do anything about feeding back, we have to be clear on what people's expectations are. That is, in an employment context, what the manager or supervisor and the employee think they are actually trying to achieve. In other words, we have to be clear, we have to have clear goals, and people need to have a common understanding of what is expected, and by whom, and by when. So step one really is about setting expectations and that may be at the beginning of the employee's journey, for example at induction or it may be at any point thereafter. Having set those expectations, the supervisor or manager should provide coaching, guidance, supervision and perhaps even be arranging for such as training and development to help the person achieve those expectations. It would be my presumption of course that on a regular basis they were meeting with the person, looking at how they were moving towards their goals, perhaps comparing their performance against milestones and importantly developing ongoing action plans. When it comes around to the evaluation or appraisal, which more commonly takes place once per year, there should be no surprises. But really importantly, we should have gathered evidence to give feedback to the person who is being appraised. There is no good saying that you were late five times. It is much better to be precise and give dates. It would of course be better that had you spoken to that person on each time they were late. Again, there are no surprises and the person has the opportunity to put things right as they go along rather than wait until one year down the line. Likewise with giving praise. If someone does something well, of course we want the evidence of that and we will reflect on it at our annual appraisal. But it is much better to catch the person doing it right there and then, and perhaps to also talk about it at quarterly or six monthly reviews, as well as recapping at the annual review. So really, no matter what we are doing, there has to be a feedback process. As we saw earlier, setting expectations is vital if we are then to appraise how well an employee has done against those expectations. You can see here that expectations come from a number of sources. It may be the job description, the supervisor's expectations, etc. 
try to involve the employee in setting expectations. Remember that managers should always acknowledge their people's successes. They should not be frightened to give constructive feedback and they should try to discuss issues, both positive and negative, when they occur. In this way, it is fresh in everyone's mind. People can explain their actions. Of course, it is not just managers and supervisors who have a responsibility for feedback. Employees do too. As an employee, it is really useful for you to ask for feedback. Perhaps you have just completed a new job, or perhaps something that has been delegated to you. It would be really useful for you to understand what people felt was good and not so good about that piece of work, and how, if at all, it could be improved in the future. You should also remember to tell your manager about your successes. Remember, your manager may not be with you 24-7, so therefore, even at work, there may be good times when you get feedback from other managers, colleagues, suppliers, partners, or indeed customers. Unless you tell the manager about that success, they may not know. I know this can be difficult for many of us to do, but it's really just a habit. If you get used to telling managers about what you did well and keeping the evidence, it means that at appraisal time, you can bring forward that evidence and indeed tell them, do you remember the case when I spoke to you about X, Y or Z? This can help to justify your decisions at appraisals. So, it is important therefore that you keep a portfolio of success, whether that be in an electronic format or copies of the work you have done, this is also a good tactic. It not only is good for appraisals when perhaps reviewing the year with your immediate manager, but also if you're having a down day. Take some time to look through your successes and that normally acts as a really positive motivator. Remember, when we get feedback, it may not always be entirely positive. So if we are getting constructive feedback, remember to listen actively for suggestions for how to improve. Sometimes managers may not tell us directly, but say, I would have done and tell us something a little differently. That does not necessarily mean that we should copy what our managers say they would have done, but it might actually be an improvement suggestion that is just disguised. So I guess, importantly, we are really saying that we must be mature in receiving and giving feedback. This slide is simply a recap of what has gone before and looks at some of the issues to be considered by a supervisor at an appraisal interview. Take time to look at this diagram and try to understand it. This slide recaps on the position from an employee perspective. I think the main thing is that employees should participate actively in the process and not have something done to them. Discuss and ask questions, share your successes and challenge if necessary, but be constructive.